this meeting is being recorded. This is the meeting of the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction, October 30th, 2019. And uh, our first order of business is public comment, and I don't see anyone from the public here, so there will be no comment. Um, we need to consider approving our previous minutes. Move to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. The previous minutes uh, have been approved. So we will move right along to our agenda, um, which mostly uh, concerns our. Does anyone actually have a copy of the agenda? I do. Um, what on else? my computer. On the next item is yeah, the discussion of the draft sections and then feedback on legal, governmental, and parliamentary issues, if any. And your business. Okay. <clears throat> so what we have is drafts of a variety of sections of our um, report. And the hard part is coming up with our recommendations because of the legal and what, what, how did I phrase it? Legal, governmental, and what else? Parliamentary. Parliamentary. Yeah, that may have not been the correct word, but um, maybe we will take the items out of order if that's okay with everyone, because it really does impact our recommendations. Okay, so we we have something to report on that. Mm -hmm. Is that what we do? We're saying. Yes, we do. Okay. Oh, you want to start with that as opposed I, to looking I, at those sections? I, I would like to because it yeah. so impacts the report okay. itself. So should I report on my Please. interactions with... I actually want to pull up the emails, though, and that will just take me a second because okay. I didn't sign on yet. <laughs> so um, Alisa has gotten official feedback from the city solicitor, and I... Um, I had an informal conversation with the mayor last night um, at an event that we were both at and got some, you know, interesting information from him. So then I'll, I'll just add that to what Elisa reports. Um, so what I asked um, Alan Seawall, the city solicitor, about was this question that came up when we um, interviewed the mayor about whether or not we could uh, mandate for the whole city um, if that actually could include the school grounds. <coughs> the mayor said no. I said that I had done some investigation at the time, if you recall, um, and it looked like we could if it were a citywide policy. Um, but because there was still question, because I and the mayor saw this differently, I uh, wrote to the city solicitor many weeks ago, but as you know, I think we've mentioned here, he was uh, post-surgical, and so he didn't get back to us for several weeks, and that's kind of put off the drafting of the legislation, unfortunately. Um, but he did get back to me on Monday, I think it was, and um, this is what he tells me. Um, the way that I, I read to you at the last meeting, that, uh, the email that I sent to him, and I based it on, I sent him the Newburyport legislation that um, bans Roundup, and that bans Roundup for schools. And I also, um, in <clears throat> subsequent conversation with him after that initial email, I let him know that Marblehead, for instance, also seems to have um, had the authority that the the board of it was the board of health that issued that one had the authority to mandate how schools manage their um, their grounds. So I sent I, I talked to him about those two, what I call precedents of um, t a town and a city in Massachusetts that had in fact mandated how school grounds were managed. <clears throat> and he got back to me and he said, um, in fact. As an attorney, um, precedent is only a legal precedent. I can't uh, use as precedent what other towns and cities are doing. And then he sent uh, me and Adele, because Adele was CC'd on this, the piece of mass general law that, that 
specifically says that it's a principle of a school that gets to decide about how the property of the school is managed. Um, I did a lot of investigation too and looked at Mass General Law and I actually found it, I mean it's, it's still not helpful because it, it doesn't allow the city council to pass legislation that affects how school grounds are managed. But it does say um, here, chapter 43, section 66, um, the general management and control of the public schools of the city and the property pertaining thereto shall be vested in the school committee. So in both cases, it doesn't allow us to pass legislation that mandates how the school committee manages its property. But um, it looks like either the school committee and or the principal have that jurisdiction. So that changes what we talked about at our last meeting in terms of drafting legislation that said in all the places that children play, including schools, school grounds, and school playing fields. Um, since I got that ruling from um, Alan Seewald on Monday, I didn't have time to draft a new piece of legislation that excludes the school grounds. So I don't have anything to submit to you today for your consideration. Um, and when Adele and I talked about it, we, we, I talked about the idea of <clears throat> simply eliminating the school piece and saying, uh, you know, playgrounds, playing field, municipal playing fields that are not on school grounds, um, and parks. And going with that, making a recommendation that doesn't have teeth of course, but making a recommendation to the school committee that um, they consider doing something in line with what we're doing municipally more broadly. Um, and that's the only way we can kind of tackle the issue of the school grounds. So that's where we are. I don't think that Alan Seawald's ruling is incontrovertible. However, I mean, I think that and he even admits in his email, and I can read the language to you if you're interested in the exact pieces. In fact, I can send it out to you now that we've talked about it. Um, we could you know, go through with it and, uh, and write a piece of legislation that includes school grounds. However, um, when it goes to the City Council's Legislative Matters Committee that Alan Seawald comes to, he will advise against it, and it's very likely that the Legislative Matters Committee, on which I sit, would adhere to what he's suggesting. There are cases where um, legislative bodies go ahead outside of and do something beyond kind of what a city solicitor recommends and, uh, and hope it isn't challenged, essentially, because really, where, this, where the, the rubber meets the road with this is if somebody challenges it legally. But the city is then liable for a potential legal challenge, which is why we usually adhere to what the city counselor, the city uh, solicitor recommends. So that's a very long explanation of where we are in terms of what we can do legislatively. However, does the Board of Health policy preempt that? Yes. The Board of Health has regulatory powers that preempt. This is my belief. And we should check that with our city solicitor. But it is my understanding that the Board of Health um, is this whole separate entity that has its own jurisdiction over municipalities. Including <coughs> schools, you're saying? That's my belief. So you the, because you these have other an organization that schools, and they're from boards of health. Say that again. Those, these other policies from the K, the in it, that were originated in boards of health do include the schools. Except we also have a new very port that originated with the city council that adhered that that instructs schools as well. So, right, but that um, our city solicitor is disputing that that would hold up in court. Right. So I, you had said at some point that there's an organization that you can kind of mm -hmm. confer with about what the um, it's jurisdiction the Mass authority Association is. of Health Boards, and I just as recently as before this meeting, contacted them for the fourth time, their, their executive director, to get an answer on, well, basically my initial, I wanted to get all policies mm -hmm. that Boards of Health did to see if we covered them or not. 
um, I can. I'm going to look at the mass uh, general laws right now while I, we're speaking because I'm just be able to. The Marblehead policy, though, Lisa. I'm just saying. I don't think it talks about it's a, it's a board of health policy, but it's not mentioned in schools at all. I'm going to it right now. So maybe we need to call the Marblehead Board of Health and ask them. And I have two phone calls <laughs> to them as well. Okay. Um, but but I do want to say, if every every school, every facility that takes care of children has an IPM plan, and some, which before the meeting, before you were here, some school districts, and we're gonna check, maybe all in Hampshire County, with the exception of Northampton, in their IPM plan, it's nowhere listing things like this. There's one paragraph and it says, we don't use them. We don't There's use pesticides. schools outside of Hampshire County. Inside, East Hampton, oh. Amherst. So, their pair, so, so despite whatever is being said in the ordinance or Board of Health regulation, these schools have done this on their own. Wow, and, that happens. and so is there another way, you know, we could go to every principal or do we go to the superintendent? Can the superintendent of schools dictate to all the principals? Well, according to my informal conversation with the mayor last night, um, it is his belief, and he's on the school committee, Mm -hmm. that the school oh, committee right. sets all policy for schools and he said it was ironic because the school committee is all volunteers and then they hire these you know staff people for these large salaries <laughs> but it's the school committee that determines the policy that these other people have to follow um, so that was his that was his understanding and what did you take away from that we could approach the school committee on this on this issue and get the school committee to determine that we should stop using pesticides in schools in Northampton. I can't remember if it was that which debate it was at. There was some one debate of the candidates. Suzanne Voss. Yes, Is and there? she mentioned mm -hmm. which I can't remember which one it was that she found out that her son, I believe, mm -hmm. plays football at the high school that they had sprayed, <clears throat> and the only reason she found out was because they had sprayed not during the vacation. So they had been notified, all, and she was shocked. Mm -hmm. She wasn't the only one who was shocked, but yeah. And she's, on the, of course, on the school committee. Well, that's what I'm saying, mm -hmm. yeah. perhaps. Right, right. So I think best, she, I, I'm guessing that she would be in favor of the school committee I'm taking on this issue, but I have, I have been reluctant to try to approach her about this because she's running for election and the, the election is on Tuesday, so right. she's very busy. But I figured as soon as Tuesday's over, I would might get in touch with her. I think what's most relevant, though, to our conversation is um, how we want to handle it in terms of our recommendations. And uh, I know that it's come up, uh, the question of whether or not we want to write a resolution that encourages the Board of Health to, to do something. But we could do a resolution uh, for the school committee that recommends that the school committee do it. So, and then, you know, beyond the scope of, of what we're going to do within the, our time frame would be any of those personal conversations that need to happen. Because it's not like we can actually get commitment from a personal conversation mm -hmm. at this point. So. I guess I'm feeling inclined, as much as I think resolutions are problematic and that the, the city council has been really kind of pushing back against too many resolutions because they're statements of, you know, they're, they're visionary statements, they're statements of intent, but they have zero teeth. But we don't have other, I mean, I think we should write a piece of legislation too about other things, but I do think that it might be a, a good idea to have a companion piece that's a resolution that encourages both the Board of Health and the school committee to address this issue or do two separate ones, one for the Board of Health and one for the school committee. Well, we don't, we don't have any other power. Um, I think that we should get clarification about whether the Board of Health has jurisdiction over schools. And that would help us because then that that's that street. I mean, it seems kind of duplicative to have a resolution about both, you know, both the board of health that's and the school committee. Yes. 
So I could get that kind of quickly. I'm, I am scheduled to meet with both the director and the chair. Oh, great. Friday. Okay. So, so um, that would. If that turns out to be the case that they do have that the board of health does have jurisdiction over the schools, then we have to decide: do we want to focus on the board of health? We could decide that right now. Yes or no? Um, is it? <coughs> How likely are, uh, do we think it is that the Board of Health would be um, welcome, would welcome taking on this issue? That's what I want to talk about. Okay. Sorry, I, I don't. Okay, um, so we don't, we don't know, we won't know the answer to that question or, or the related question um, until after that. I think we have to talk about the timing here then because if we're supposed to get a report in with recommendations by the 10th, um, if we decide to write a resolution, and we want it to go forward at the same time that we're submitting our report. I mean, the absolute latest that we could submit a resolution would be the first city council meeting in December. And that's really pushing it in case somebody wants to send it to committee or wherever else. Um, so I'm just trying to, you said you have a meeting when, Cindy? Friday. Um, that's as soon as I can. So if we know that they have jurisdiction over the schools, we should actually over the weekend to have ready for the Tuesday submission to the city council agenda a resolution. So that would mean writing a resolution um, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday after we have an answer from the school committee. Does that feel doable to people? I mean, we could potentially submit it the second meeting in November to the city council. And that would give us a little bit more time, and it could be a recommendation without the actual resolution. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? What is a recommendation without a resolution? Is that a different category? No, but we could make a recommendation that we, um, we would like to see, something like we'd like to see the, the, school, the uh, Board of Health uh, do this, this, and this. Meaning as a... The resolution itself is something that would be considered on the council floor and would be passed and it would be an official document that would go to the Board of Health encouraging them to do something. So when you say res when you say recommendation, you mean from our report? Yes. Okay. Not a city council recommendation. Got it. Right. I was hoping that any resolutions or um, and or legislation that we put forward that we submitted at the same time that we submit the report. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was thinking of. Well, can I just say, I mean, I, I have to just to have, be able to say this. I, I need to put those deadlines aside in my mind because I feel like we're, um, because of the deadline, because of the deadline, I don't think we're doing the right thing. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I just think, if, if we have a conversation about focusing on children and also focusing on, I think, the education that needs to be done in the community, um, and that education would include going to all the school committee members, you know, going to the principals, going, I mean, and, and, the, alter and the education of the departments that say, this is going to be so costly if we do this. This is going to break our budget. There are some schools of thought that say this is not going to break a budget. This is about having a different mindset about how you approach things. <coughs> and so without that piece, are we going to do a resolution recommendation that falls flat because we can recommend anything to the Board of Health, the Board of Health can choose not to do it. You know, they, they have that right as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just worry about, it. and I know the reasons for the deadlines, but I just worry that we're taking on an issue that people just aren't ready to hear yet, which is odd, because we are ready to hear it. But there's a lot of people, even the people, you know, we have the range of the broad book people and the turf management people at UMass. You know, people are saying, we still have to do this, and no one is considering alternatives. I don't know how to pull that off. I truly don't. Um, 
but in every policy that I read, and every you know, every time I go down one of those rabbit holes on the web, it's all about this kind of body of people, whatever we want to call them, advisory, outreach, friends of pesticides, anti-pesticides. It's this group of people, Overs oh. oversights, yeah. that they get together and they work on this issue the way we've been working, and they have some really good recommendations and research and, and procedures and processes to think about, you know, IPM as OPM, or organic pest management. I mean, just to help people think about it differently. I mean, I just see that trend that people are just like getting around this issue. And, and you, you've lived this thing for so long and you're like, oh, geez. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't <laughs> see these as mutually exclusive processes. Mm -hmm. I think that they can kind of be on a um, parallel track. And I think the track that you're talking about is extraordinarily important. However, and I say this as, as somebody who works um, doing policy advocacy professionally, cultures and processes and procedures shift in a number of ways. They can be groundswell up, they can be slow with you know, grassroots pushing, um, they can come from a legislative decision, you know, more top down. Um, they often work together, you know, as a as a um, synchronous kind of process. And so, I just I don't want us to miss the opportunity for this committee to have an impact. And maybe that's a ego thing on my part because no, it's, it's a committee that I fair. initiated. But I, I just don't see them as mutually exclusive processes. I think that it's okay for us to make that statement um, official, have the city council back it up now, and then make a recommendation that I think is really brilliant that we've talked about that Adele um, initiated this idea of proposing a, an ongoing oversight committee that would be, in fact, tasked with you know, over the next couple of years, three years, I think three to five years to be really realistic, is really working with all of those departments, the school committee and the school, the, the superintendent, the board of health, to really put flesh on the bones of what we're trying to kind of put out there in four months. And I just told Adele, I figured out we're, we've, we've had a total of four months in one week, mm -hmm. you know, from the, from the time that we actually convened to getting our report in. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I absolutely get what you're saying. I think it's so important. It's such long-term work. And I think there's a moment here that we have and an opportunity that we have. And we're tasked with doing this and coming up with concrete you know, recommendations, mm -hmm. legislation. And I, don't, I think it would be a missed opportunity if we don't follow through with it. So I would like to see these as parallel processes. And I, I appreciate what you're saying. And I think, for me, the recommendation of the Oversight Committee with with a lot of you know teeth in that recommendation. This is what they should be doing. This is what they should be looking at. Not just let's appoint an oversight committee. Um, the strength of that, you know, to me is is far beyond the whereas's resolutions. <laughs> you know, and if we can get the city council to buy into that, I would be help. I would be happy. But um, I I would like to point out to the city council about all these. You know, if we're standing out there with our school policies as an aberration compared to the other school systems in, in um, Hampshire County or maybe even Western Mass, I'd like, I'd like to bring that to their attention so that they see this is not just a bunch of kumbaya folks getting together. That's all, you know. So there are complications. I don't know if you want to address this, Adele, but there are complications with that recommendation in terms of where it originates, who has authority to convene such a committee, mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to pick that up, Adele, with what we covered? Yeah, so um, apparently <laughs> the city, under the city council's current rules, it only has three or four committees. And so um, to create a whole new committee would require changing the rules of the city council. So the chart or city council? City council rules. So that would be a two-step step process. And I don't know. And we have to get the city councilors to buy onto it, which is right. questionable. Yeah, so we, that would be a whole effort in itself to change the rules to create this committee. Otherwise, it would be the mayor's decision whether to create this commission, and it would be a, a mayor.
mayoral commission, not a city council <coughs> committee. Um, and you know, we had no idea whether um, the mayor would be interested or willing to do that. So it puts the ball in his court, and we don't know which way to go. And I've had experience with the mayor around this issue for about six years now, and um, he was not inclined to create a, a committee. Ultimately, initially, he was really interested, but it did not happen, and I'm not sure if that's changed for him. So we can make that recommendation, we can put lots of detail in it, what we want them to do, but then the question is how we actually get it created. So there's the executive branch and the legislative branch. One of those branches um, might do it and both might not be inclined to. I think um, it's such a specific issue and the city council committees are, are quite broad and hold a lot of different things. There's a community resources committee, a city services committee, finance committee, and legislative matters committee. So I would suspect that a lot of councilors would balk and say, we have these broad committees, all of a sudden, you know, we're gonna have this pesticide reduction committee under mm -hmm. our auspices. What they would be inclined, I think, to say is, let's put this under city services and have it as a duty of the city services committee to oversee, which would end up giving a short shrift. So that's, that is my concern about doing it in the legislative branch. And then I'm not sure that the mayor is going to be inclined to create a whole special commission just to continue the work that we've started. So that means that um, <coughs> that puts us in a dilemma of ne neither option looks super promising, and yet we have to choose one of those two options if we want to have an oversight committee. Pardon? Do we have to choose uh, one? Of those? That's a, I don't know. Uh, uh, since our recommendations are going to city council. I would think if we want, if we're choosing the city council, that would be our recommendation to the council. If um, does the council make recommendations to the mayor? Um, not officially. Like we've never submitted a resolution to the mayor that says, you know, you need to do this. But people, you know, can have conversations with him back channel and see if he's interested in things. So since our report goes to city council, it, it wouldn't. If we decided we wanted to go to the mayor, the, the, the mayoral route, it wouldn't even be in our report to city council, necessarily. Well, it could be. I mean, we talked about a recommendation of a public education campaign, which mm -hmm. would ultimately be city staff that would be tasked with doing it, mm -hmm. um, and we were going to make that recommendation. I think it's fine for us to make those recommendations and to submit them to the mayor, but we have zero um, to authority submit them to, to the city council. We'd the submit mayor. them to the city council, but also to the mayor, yeah. But that's on the school department. Um, like the recommendations wouldn't go to the school departments, the other city department? We can make recommendations to whoever we want, mm -hmm. they, but nobody has the obligation to you know, pick them up. I think we can make recommendations to the school department too, or, and to the, to the school committee. We can write resolutions too, but again, it doesn't have teeth and we can't compel any of those. The only people we can uh, compel, as it were, is if we write a piece of legislation or we write a resolution and the city council votes on it. Resolutions don't, don't actually compel ultimately. They're just stating the intention of the city council. Legislation is the only thing that we have at our fingertips to actually um, change something. So it's the only thing with teeth, right? Well, we could have a recommendation um, based on our premise of protecting children and the precautionary principle of, in, in health to the school committee. Our recommendation is that you follow these towns of bang, 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 all these towns of Hampshire and wherever else that have this particular statement and that you implement it accordingly. And that, that's school, that's children, that's our recommendation. They can choose to accept or reject, but we go on record <laughs> saying we've discovered something. That's right, we're creating a record, and I think that is important. And, and we, we want to 
you know, we don't have to worry about organic pest management at this point. You know, we can put that in and say there are other alternatives. You know, if you feel mm -hmm. these using these things are really, really important. Mm -hmm. I high school. <laughs> um, but this is yours. And it gets us out of this conundrum of Board of Health or whatever. You know, I mean, I'll find out the answers to that. And then those back back channel conversations that you talked about, the education and the and you know Adele talking to the chair of the school committee. That's actually the mayor, the vice chair of the school yeah. committee. Who, that that could go on after this committee dissolves um, to try and kind of you know strengthen what we write in our recommendations. Mm -hmm. But again, that would be or if we somehow establish some kind of oversight committee or someone in the city does they could be tasked with following up with all those entities. So that could, could that also be one of our recommendations that there be an oversight committee with the following duties? Um, and then, you know, that's our recommendation. We can Whether make that recommendation to the, to the um, city council. And then I would say next term, if there's a particular city councilor who's interested in picking it up and trying to figure out how to make that happen legislatively or with an order to change the council's orders, then that could happen. But the recommendation at least will exist if we write so it now. The recommendation would be on paper and whether th then the mayor could say, well, that's not really a city council thing. I I'm going to go ahead and establish a commission for this. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Right. It would be. Uh, and we can certainly encourage him to do that. But I, well, I'm just going back to what, what you all just said about having it on paper. You know, this is what we recommend. It's Whether it ever happens or not is another issue, but yep, we have totally. recommended it. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> I, I just, I guess I just don't want to leave anything open, right? Maybe mm -hmm. we push it to school committee. That's where it belongs. They own that land. They own that property. Um, no, they don't. The city owns it. But well, but yeah, they have. They, they own the when school is in session, they are in charge of okay. the property. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but okay, let's just say we find out that the board of health does have jurisdiction over the schools, mm -hmm. and that the board of health is willing to take on this issue. Mm -hmm. Does that change anything that we just thought about? Uh, well, well, it's problematic just coming from a Board of Health perspective mm -hmm. because the Board of Health will immediately say, and again, I'm, I'm just based on my knowledge of it, but I'm not speaking for them. Mm -hmm. um, who's going to enforce it? These are all the things we're enforcing. Who's going to own it? Who's going to keep all the chemicals? Who's going to make sure <coughs> this amount is applied or this isn't? What are the exemptions? What are the waivers? You know, the Board of Health is going to have to really immerse itself into that. Um, and I, I and it has that willingness if it is willing, <laughs> you know. I don't know yet until I you know put my toe in that water to see where where the wind's blowing. But um, it's <laughs> a lot of metaphors. Put your toe in the water to see where the wind's blowing. But it's you know it's um, it's calling to task other departments, you know, and that's. That's where that oversight thing can be helpful, but um, so I mean, in all of its, I'm, I'm just thinking of all the regulations that we have in the board. I mean, um, you know, pretty much the departments that we work with through DPW, and you know, there seems to be that kind of uh, relationship, the police department, etc. Enforcement is going to be tough because you're enforcing against your peer, <laughs> you know guy who's spraying or the, or the principal or the maintenance guy who's you know has a little bit of a chemical in his shack his or her shack and decides this is how I'm going to treat this <coughs> how does one enforce it you know? so these are just some of all the issues that I would that run through in my mind so um, and the Board of Health could say you know based on all the health issues in the city we may pass on this one right now <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. I'm not saying you would do that. And other municipalities that have these policies in place, some of them, uh, some one of them that I read just said the town will enforce this. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say yeah. anything yeah. about yeah. who in the town or yeah. how, but maybe that's not really. It's like Pulaski Park, Park that is, is supposed to be non-smoking. You know, 
Oh yeah, exactly. So it's right. the same thing. So um, maybe you know maybe in, maybe to the board of health enforcement is a big issue, but it seems like in these other policies the enforcement is left sort of vague. And, and we we've, we've had experience of that with like smoking on a field, right? Mm -hmm. how, how do you if a dad or a parent is watching their soccer game or mom and they're smoking, how do you enforce that? Our, our sort of rule of thumb was that smoking has become so abhorrent that mom number two will talk to mom and dad and that's how sort of that self-enforcement. <coughs> I don't know if that's, that would work in, in this world. But how do these cities that have no pesticides in their schools, how do they do that? How do they get there? Yeah. That's what I would be that's really a, curious yeah. to know about. I mean, it is a mindset change in my, my totally, opinion. but how do they do yeah. that? Because everyone yeah. loved pesticides post-World War II. How did they end up like that? I don't know what their culture of their fields are, like ours, you know, I don't know. I just I don't know. Yeah. I want to um, just address the enforcement piece because that came up in my conversations with Alan Seawall, the mm -hmm. city solicitor as well, um, when I was talking to him about uh, the possibility of legislation that would um, ban pesticide use or mandate ultimate organic management in places children play not talking about the schools, I asked about do we have authority to assign this to, I think I said the Board of Health, and he came back to me and he said, we can put in our legislation that the Department of Health is going to be the enforcer. <laughs> Whether yeah. they like it or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that, that comes directly from the city solicitor. So what the piece of legislation that we're still, we still have on the table as a possibility um, could in fact mandate that the Board of Health be the enforcer. And then I know Cindy's- Or the department, <coughs> it's the Department of Health that he said. Oh, the be, department, yeah. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said it wrong a second time, yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 So I think that So focusing on places children play uh, does not include parking lots farmland oh. and um, yeah. I personally would mm -hmm. like for us to include those mm -hmm. um, especially the parking lot issue um, given yeah. that we have some big roundup in the high school parking lots is beyond me yeah. any park well and then you know there was that woman uh, at the forum who was complaining about the round house parking lot um, and her dog and she did give us a copy of a study that we have don't have um, scanned yet to be put into our public comment. Yeah, that's that for two, 4D. Pardon me? That's for 2.4D. What is that? That's a pesticide. Okay. Is that one that we use? I oh, me certainly. Okay. But what kind of study would it be? Um, it was a scientific, <coughs> I have it here. I think I put it here. It was a scientific, yeah, I think I put it here, yeah, because this is my whole packet on the forums. It was a study from Purdue University about, um, the effect of dogs on pesticide, pesticides on dogs and how some dogs, some breeds are more susceptible oh, and they get bladder cancer and her dog had bladder cancer and um, and makes the point in the, in the paper, in the study, that um, animals are, I'm trying to remember the term. They're that they close use. to the ground, take them for walks, they, they sniff them. In. Yeah, but animals are sort of like a, mm, uh, a canary in the coal mine. mine. Kind of like a canary in the coal mine um, for humans. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why that's why veterinary medicine is included in public health because sometimes if you detect a problem in some other species, you can you can draw an immediate um, parallel to what the impact that could happen. Now. What? That's why makeup companies test on animals. Well, that's true too. But anyway, so so this is a Purdue News, and it says um, it says uh, because the study shows exposure to the chemicals exacerbates a genetic predisposition in Scotties towards developing transitional cell bladder cancer. It's likely that only a segment of the human population would be in similar danger, but we still need to find out who those individuals with the same predisposition are. Until we, know, until we do, we won't know who's safe and who isn't. But the point is that, that, um, that this is true. If you find that you know, pesticides hurt dogs, 
they could very well be hurting people too. It, we just may not know it yet. So, um, but we should scan this, I think, and put it. Does anybody well, want to scan this and, and send it to Laura to put in? This is. You I can just give it to Laura and she'll scan it. Okay. Um, all right. I, I don't have time to go see Laura today, though. I have to scoot over to Amherst to give a talk. So, um, is somebody else going to have time to? Oh, well, she won't be in her office anyway because yeah. it'll be after five. Never mind. I'll, I'll slip it under a door with a note, though. I'm happy to do that. Okay. To all right. Good. There you go. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, and I, and this is my whole packet of stuff from the forums. And you said you would be willing to. Summarize the forums. So if I, if you want, I can just give you my whole, all my oh, notes. Oh, you don't have it digitized. Oh no, no. I don't. But all right, I, then I'll just do it based on the notes that I have. If okay, okay, and then if then you can show me your notes, and I will add. If I have anything different in mine, I'll add okay. to it. How's that? Okay, so um, yeah, I thought so it was just that's cutting and pasting. Sorry, that's all right. No, that's fine. But uh, the the parking lot issue. I mean, the farmland issue is really only about one parcel. Um, no. Sorry? It's also about I don't understand that relationship of the Smith Boak big parcel of land, state owned. It's state owned land, land and I think should over it. I know mm -hmm. we don't, but how, how do we get to them? Or how do we? You talk to the, it's a, it's a separate school district, and you talk to the superintendent there, and we can, you know, make that, that recommendation. We fold it in too. with our other, you know. I, I feel like we don't know enough about that be, to, to put that into a recommendation right now. Now, if we had a few more weeks to go talk to them, maybe. But we don't know what the requirements are for managing state land. Because their farmland is what we're talking extent, about. Their farmland, yes. not, their, not their school right. or property. Their farmland. We could make a recommendation just say to the extent that state law allows, we recommend um, non-chemical management of, I mean, we can say anything we want in recommendation. Because those are children that are working in those fields, part of their curriculum. And it is right adjacent to a place that's used by the public with heavy use. Well, the dog park is part of mm -hmm. their agriculture oh. land. They don't like, that's why they don't want us to call it a dog park. Right, but um, some, like runners and runners, dogs, it's heavily <coughs> used. Okay, so then that would be, so, so um, flesh this out. So it would be a recommendation that to the extent allowed by state law, um, that Smith of Oak um, um, not use pesticides on its farmland, its state owned farmland. Is that what you're saying? Is, mm -hmm. that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So we're making a recommendation to Smith Vogue. Boy. But they can use it on that campus? Well, then that's the other thing. Then we can have, oh, then we have no, to talk I think about we the school. Both, because yeah, if we're well, talking to I, the I know, but it's different. They're two different issues. So, so I just want to get this one down. Okay. Smith Vogue, um, discontinue use of um, pesticides on uh, state-owned farmland. I really think we should look into that before we say it, because we don't want to say something that's ridiculously wrong. You know, I mean, it may be that the state you can't do that on the state land, and we'll look ridiculous if we're recommending that. That's how that's how I feel about it. No, that's, that makes sense. Okay, so but then the other issue is the school property, which we would have to go to the Smith Vogue um, trustees or the superintendent, whichever, both maybe. Um, so we could include that in our recommendations, mm -hmm. right? Make it laugh. The way that we're doing it to the school committee. Right. right. The, so we would include um, include Smith Vogue. Smith Vogue and NPS. Smith Vogue and it's NPS. Northampton Public Schools. And NPS. Mm -hmm. We include yeah. them both in the same recommendation. We don't distinguish. We just mention that they're, we know that they're different. Um, okay. All right. I'd like to get back to the legislation piece because we've all along we've said the places children play, mm -hmm. which are playgrounds, playing fields, and parks. Okay, so which ones of but those are not school? Which all of those exist municipally that are not 
schools and we can mandate for all of those. So there's, you know, Mainsfield, Arcanum Fields, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's uh, Maine. You um, want to figure Arcanum. out all the parks? Right well, I, I, I just want to get some But I'm going to write I, the legislation. Okay, so. fine. So you'll, yeah, you'll have done that. Okay, so um, and then the Florence Fields is another, right? Yes. Uh, okay. All right. So, so but you, you had said you want in legislation something about um, farmland and uh, parking lots. That's too. my desire. I, I would probably settle for the parking lots. Um, I, I think um, we should point out to somebody, maybe to the city solicitor, that this is a liability issue for um, the city. I, mean, I, I think to both the city solicitor and Wayne Fiden, um, that that neighbors that that allowing toxic chemicals in a in a residential neighborhood on farmland in a residential neighborhood like Sylvester Road, where there are children right next door, um, exposes the city to um, liability. I, I just think maybe they might will respond speak to them, right? <laughs> what? Well, maybe that will speak to them. Yeah, maybe they'll res be more responsive to that argument than they are to the other arguments. I can just just say it. in the intro to the a legis a legislation often has a little intro that kind of explains why we're doing this legislation. So I will I think that's a really good idea. I'll include a sentence or two about how um, with all of the uh, lawsuits that have come about around pesticides effects, da da da, the city could in fact be held liable, and we are hoping to protect the city from liability for anything that could be associated as a pesticide related health issue, something like that. So that'll, that'll be good. That'll be in there. Okay, great. I guess I still am kind of a little bit stuck trying to figure out whether the same piece of legislation would, would be those places children play along with that one field, that one agricultural parcel, and then all city parking lots. I mean, I'm just, I, I feel like we might be, unless I did it as a progressive thing, a table. So in year, yeah, years yeah. one to three, the places children play will be managed organically. Years four to five, parking lots in the farmland or something like that. Because if we, we we're not going to pass this legislation if it feels like lump, you know, like all of these things within the first whatever have to happen. Does that make sense? Totally. I mean, I feel comfortable mm -hmm. including those only if we do it as a graduated process. And there is no doubt that we, no matter how we frame it, Wayne will say that basically we're killing agriculture in the city if we. Mm -hmm. You will. Yeah. So. Um, we could soften it a little bit by, by talking about um, providing some assistance to any farmers um, to help them make a transition away from pesticide use. And then, then we just have to figure out how we're going to provide that assistance. Yeah, you can't put that in legislation. Okay. All right. But there, can't there be a section there or about this sort of idea of um, costliness, just to address that right head on. Yeah. Mm. That you know, oh yeah, we, we've heard feedback is costly. That's when the grant thing comes into play, and um, that's also when mm. some kind of language about how we have to reorient the thinking. Yeah, or, or not have to, but you know what I'm saying. Clearly, we're doing practices based on old thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking so despite the claim of costliness that could be prohibitive, costs stabilize after the initial investment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with turf, usually within two to three years is what I understand from talking to Chip Osborne and Bernadette. And I think we even have what she handed out that has some research about that. It's not only cost stabilized. Actually, that's, that wasn't, a, that wasn't um, she didn't send that in electronically. Right, we have a hard copy. So you and you have a hard copy of that. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's true, it's people power that is what I've heard from um, Rich Parcelletti. He's most worried about that the 
it's just uh, more labor intensive and that's ongoing. Vernon declines that's not true, but that is mm -hmm. definitely what I've heard from city department people. Yeah, this is, so you could give this to her also to um, scan. Um, well, if we're recommending something that's more costly, um, so what? Isn't that so, debatable though? Well, it, is, it sounds like it's debatable. Um, certainly it's not going to work unless we train all those people who work for the DPW and all that. I mean, they need to understand because only Rich Porcelettis now have the training. So everybody, it, all the school custodians need to be trained. Absolutely. Um, so that's going to be a cost. Don't forget with the, the turf, we're hoping that we will be able to access these grants mm -hmm. that they do two years of assistance and financial coverage. So that, you know, that's built into what we're suggesting, that we make um, use of those uh, funds. Do those funds uh, include any training or education? Oh yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's two tra years of training. They accompany a municipality for two years with mm -hmm. um, all of the materials, um, training, um, advice, ongoing kind of you know consultation. That'd be great. So, and, and who would be responsible for applying to, for those grants? Um, city departments, I think it would fall upon them. Is that something that we can help them with? But that's why an oversight committee would be really useful, because yeah, right. that could they could be tasked with that. Yeah. So we would include them um, in, in their responsibilities, making sure that um, grants are applied for and received to um, train everybody. Is that correct? That makes sense. Yep. Of the departments, DPW seem to be in pretty good shape in terms of employing, you know, organic um, methods where, where they could. Well, we've since heard um, anecdotally that they it's not really true. Really, that they're um, that they're actually you know, following up with organic management of all the property, and of course, the parking lots are not they true. Do that. Um, so I don't recall that we got into any great detail on the parking lot issue with, no, I mean, with anybody. No, I haven't at all. Yeah, I mean, and that's all, under DPW. I under I believe so, and. What we were told, and I don't remember who said it, was that Roundup is allowed for use on parking lots, and, and we were led to believe that you know that was only if it was really necessary. But I think that was from the schools. That was, was from the schools, I believe. I remember them saying that that they use Roundup on the parking lot grasses. And I thought that Wayne told something. us that in parking lots and the bike path and all that, the triclopier was used or something. Is that a triclopier? He did mention that it was used, used in brown parking up. lots. Bittersweet and Japanese knotweed for those two. But not in the parking lots, just the weeds in the parking lots. Triclopier was my understanding. That's the one that's he did used. mention triclopier, but. Um, I don't believe it was associated with parking lots. I don't think he, yeah, was, he, was, he talked a lot about the bike trails, but I don't think Wayne talked about the parking lots. Really? Yeah, I remember that. But so who manages those? I, I would think it would be the DPW, and um, I, mean, I, 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 I would have to go back to my notes, but I don't want to take the time for that right now. Can I ask yeah. a question about the Wayne um, mm -hmm. testimony? He said goats, they tried goats, just really hard to herd them. And then an article came out in the paper. No, he said that they, they applied for $10,000 from this, the CPC, CPA oh, funds, okay. to expand the trial. Okay, so we're getting more goals. So what he didn't give us was any detail. Are they going to work with the same woman? It's Alyssa Alford, this woman who's been very interested in our committee. She owns the goats. She's a resident. Okay. Um, whether it would be taking her paying her because she's been doing it for free I think she was willing to yes I think I read that so oh, if it was paying her people. or if it was actually trying to figure out another company with goats I think the paper set made it sound like it was her yeah her. so they would just be paying but her 
So but I don't think they've gotten the ten thousand dollar award yet, yet, right? No. So it's not a sure it. thing, right. but at least they're applying for it, which is great. And that just that goes where? Well, I think I think um, in areas of the bike path where um, we're setting up her solar electric fences to keep the goats in will work. So it can't be highly shaded, I wouldn't think. And it can't be really steep. steep. Like they don't want to use it, for instance, at the community gardens because it's too steep and she can't set up the fencing. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know the geography well enough over there to, to know if that makes any sense. Um, I mean, why couldn't you send up the electric fence at the bottom of the hill? But I, but again, I, I shouldn't be blabbing because I don't know the geography. Yeah, and she's just one woman. It's like a really small scale little operation, and she goes out there by herself. She's a woman about my age, and you know, sets up the fence. And so I think she's not going to be like tromping down and up. And it seems like most of the bike path is pretty shady. Well, so where they had tried it was over by the uh, skate park. Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming they're probably gonna, they would do something like that. Good. Oh, maybe it's pretty good. flat over there. Yeah, and it's oh, pretty. Oh, two goats eat. What? Oh, <laughs> two goats eat. I wonder. Uh, it depends how much time they have, how many how many days you're gonna bring them there. Um. I, I'm still stuck on the legislation piece because that's what I'm okay, so writing, and I just I don't know if it makes sense in terms of the saleability, the palatability of this legislation to include the farmland and parking lots, even if we do it as a timetable. Like I feel like if we focus on the places children play as a first step legislatively, that would be a big win, mm. and that. We just have to imagine that somewhere down the line, someone else on the city council wants to pick up legislation around ag and you know parking lots, etc. Or we could even you know try an informal approach to talk with the DPW folks about how disturbed we are about the parking lot issue and see if they're just willing to take it on themselves without legislation. I mean, maybe that they just don't think about it. Maybe if their staff had the enough training. Then. That, that into the recommendations just so also, get lost. and also the farmland should be I don't want to lose it okay you know, that so we can't say this should be addressed this should be what it, whatever yeah I mean I think our recommendations can be anything and everything because again they don't have teeth but at least we're we're notating it and we're kind of creating this document for the future of mm -hmm. what we hope you know will be and then if we do in fact at some point in the city get an oversight committee mm -hmm. they'll have our recommendations they don't have to start from scratch in yeah that's a good thing i love that so you're going to add that to the recommendations so i'm going to um i think i'm just making notes too and then um assuming that training does occur uh, once they get training in using these other methods, it's some of the same staff who will probably be spraying the parking lots. So, you know. You, you, you talked about wetlands, not even addressing wetlands at all. Well, there's watershed. Watershed. There's watershed, and then there's conservation area that includes wetlands where we are using. Um, Rodeo, which is glyphosate for water based, whatever. Or something, some of those are fact. You know, I keep going back to the fact that there really is nowhere published that even Roundup is as toxic as you want to believe. Mm -hmm. There's no scientific evidence that that is the case. Well, I think that there is. There are there are individual reports. There's no summary of evidence that says, you know, there's no meta analysis that says Roundup is so harmful. There is a meta analysis but, with I IARC. Right, right. But that's on glyphosate itself. I don't think it's on Roundup. Oh, I see what you mean. But not with the surfactant. Which is a different creature. Uh, Plus, well, that's after true. Bear bought it. So my brother's an attorney, and I've been talking to him about this stuff. And I think I mentioned this to you, Adele, that. After Bear bought it, they just 
minutely tweaked the formula so that they no longer have the responsibility. Anything that says that Roundup, when it was owned by Monsanto, is in fact harmful, toxic, and there are all these lawsuits, the fact that they've tweaked it means you have to start from scratch in the research. So, yeah, in terms of liability for this, I asked him about liability for the city, and he said, oh, well, now, if someone brought a case forward now and it's owned by Bayer, you'd be starting from scratch with that research piece. But what if it was, if someone claimed that they were if it's by Roundup? Yeah. yeah, but back to your point, you're saying that there's no body of research on the combination of glyphosate with the, all the or surfactants. Or on glyphosate itself. Because the research on glyphosate itself, I think there, is, there are studies that show yeah, damage to yes. various species, blah, blah, blah. But then there's also I've other studies that say... Hmm? I've not found them. Really? I, I read a study, because when I had conversations with Bob Zimmerman about the use of rodeo, at, uh, at Fitzgerald Lake, I found a study that was done independently that shows that, in fact, um, fish's life cycles are being affected greatly. Their eggs are coming out deformed in places that have used rodeo over a period of time. Um, their life cycles are short. Their reproductive life cycles are completely disrupted. So there are definitely studies like that. I mean, it's a, it's a vast field with you know, individual studies that have been done, but like um, Adele is saying, I think there is no meta-analysis for each of the different products. And as Len Cohen said um, when he testified, and, and he has since uh, submitted a um, written document as well, um, it's, <coughs> there is no consensus, you know. There's a, uh, People who believe one thing, mm -hmm. and there's some evidence for this, there's some evidence for that, but um, it's not. It's so like when you get in and read the papers carefully, mm -hmm. you find out. Mm -hmm. Even that study that came out recently on the damage it does to the microbes in the gut of bees, mm -hmm. even that doesn't really say glyphosate kills bees. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. It what says there's it? one gut microbe that it affects. Mm -hmm. There's many gut microbes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. The jury's still out, yeah. unfortunately. unfortunately. The problem is, is that industry has very, very long tentacles, and I am very suspicious of a lot of the research that has been Absolutely. Of but the fact remains that no one is funding the research on the other side, except for that one study that's going on in Italy. I think we're getting into the weeds here. <laughs> we are getting into the weeds. We are, but at the same time, uh, we're so... A, it's a valid point, because that could be just a deal breaker. You know, someone can say, there's no science that says this is true. And what I've been reading is that people acknowledge and accept that, but there's a phrase, I can't remember what it is, it's somewhat like the precautionary principles, that it, it may cause harm. Exactly. And so why walk away from the may cause harm? Why don't we prevent it because it may cause harm when there are other alternatives that can be used? You and know, in other countries, you don't they're, in other countries, they're saying it fairly incontrovertibly. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. and if you, if you, have you been on the Beyond Pesticides website? So they, they've aggregated a ton of studies that have some really clear findings. So they, I think they do exist. And, you know, like I said, in other countries, they're not only legislating, but I mean, there's just the scientific um, opinion broadly is that these are harmful substances. So I, I want to go back to your original question, which was wetlands and um, watershed, et cetera. It, my impression of um, how our city is using these substances on conservation land is in a very restricted way very targeted and not forever you know they're like at Fitzgerald Lake they treated I don't know how often until and now now they're measuring the all the native plants that are coming back in and documenting the benefits um, but they're not still using the chemical oh yes they are every single year they are every year for yeah. the last six years that I've been on the city council I've been tasked with having to vote whether or not to approve CPA funds for it there's for rodeo specifically, so glyphosate and wetlands. Really? 
So the, the areas that he was talking about, for example, where he was documenting all the benefits, why would they continue to use it? Because that would be also killing because off the beneficial. Invasives come up. There once it was Phragmites, now it's another thing. The Phragmites returns. Okay. All right. So um, cancel that idea. I mean, my, my, I guess <clears throat> I was hoping. He did say it was improving. He said it was stress. I mean, he said in we'll well, this one area anyway that mm -hmm. it was like they counted 31 native species that were had returned. Um, sounded pretty good to me. You would think that would outcompete anything else, but okay. So I, I don't. We don't have that information, um, but we have some piece of information that they they continue to <laughs> apply for money for it. So they must still be using it. Okay. And we know from Wayne that they're using it in conservation areas broadly. They apply it in Mineral Hills, um, in the, the, the conservation area around the bike path in Leeds, um, conservation area behind the Lathrop community. Uh, this is all stuff I know because I've had to vote um, on the request for CPA funds for it. But also Wayne confirmed it when he was here. So it's being used in conservation areas. It is being used in watershed areas on invasives. Um, they're using, you know, the very uh, controlled methods of injecting into mm -hmm. stems and painting stems and things like that. But it is being used in all those places. And there are some people that have approached me over the years saying, "Watershed area, you know, it's getting into our drinking supply." Um, but you know, the city, the city has done a lot of research on that. That's one thing that uh, that I've talked to people at DPW about. They hire consultant conservationists. Molly Hale, a lot of you might know in the mm -hmm. city, um, who is an ecologist, and I forget exactly what her title is, but she's the one who actually goes and does the pesticide application in watershed areas. Hmm. You know, those are whole other things. Do we want to tackle that? I personally am not in a place where I feel ready to do that. And I think conservation areas too, and it's just way too tall a mountain to climb right now. I agree. I, I, um, I personally, having seen out of control Japanese knotwood in our city, I thought to myself, boy, I sure wish they had treated this area when it was when there was just a little bit of Japanese knotweed because now it's t it's so out of control. You, there's no way you could ever ever bring it under control. It's so um, I mean, it's acres of this stuff. Where? Well, I can't remember if it was Sawmill Hills or Mineral Hills. Mm -hmm. It's the because I you know, but I went hiking with a group, and um, I, I might be able to reconstruct it. But I you know I said to somebody. What is this plant? I mean, it's everywhere. And he said, "Well, duh, it's Japanese knotweed, <laughs> you know." And and it, I mean, it just went on and on. I couldn't believe the extent of it. So, uh, you know, I'm personally not willing to say you can't ever use it because I think that there is a place for it. So, and I've seen uh, kudzu in the south. It's devastating. What happens when you bring goats to? Eat these. I mean, I guess the life cycle of the chemicals isn't that long, but you're bringing goats to places that have been treated historically with pesticides. You're not endangering your goats. I don't know. That's, that has nothing to do with anything, but it just kind of, kind of came up for me. Sorry. I don't actually know um, how many years glyphosate stays in the soil if the goats are, you know, eating. I'm the told us 30 days is its life cycle in the water. In the water. I have 91 days for half life. In one, two to 197 days in the soil. That's what I'm say. So if if, um, if it, it strongly been, absorbs to the soil, if it had been used, you know, five years ago, it wouldn't be as much in the soil as there was when it was first applied. Well, it says it strongly absorbs, so it may just be incorporated into the mm -hmm. public acid, humic acid, whatever. Mm -hmm. No way to say. Or if it's uh, really and truly in, injected into the stems, it may not really get much into the soil. But anyway, we don't know that, and no, that's not that's in our issue. So getting back to our legislation, uh, you're suggesting that we address these other farmland and parking lots as a recommendation, not as not as part of the legislation. That we restrict the legislation part only to places where children play. 
And in fact, I would entitle the legislation as something like that, you know, protecting children from potentially harmful pesticides ordinance or something. And then when the press comes along, and says, oh, could you explain this to us? What about, you know, what about the high school? What about this? Well, then we have to explain that that's under the jurisdiction of the school committee, and we're hopeful, very we hopeful. Made strong recommendations yeah, to the school bodies committee that would do the same thing. So we have legislation that we know what we're going to do, and I'm going to write it and bring it to our do meeting you, next Monday. And what is that legislation that we know what we're going to do? Is Places to children do? play, playgrounds, playing fields, parks, I'm going to do a one to three year timeline, uh, talk about the uh, how are grants available. I think one year is pretty short. I, mean, I can see people saying, whoa, how can they ever change that much in one year? <laughs> so maybe. Well, if we get these grants, they well, can but it might start take a year to get quickly. the grant. Yeah. How long does it take to get a grant? You have to apply. Someone's got to write the grant proposal. <laughs> um, are you suggesting I say like two to four instead? Yeah. Yeah. Just because um, a year is not a lot of time. You're going to have to get a grant, train people, and change practices. But the one year can apply to um, the school district. <laughs> if we say, you know, if we tell, advise the school district, you know, it's our recommendation, you really need to have this different kind of approach. If they agree to that, that's within a year. So we don't need any grant money for that. We don't. And so I think the one year can be the one. I don't know what we can accomplish. You mean as part there. of the recommendation, yeah. not as part of the legislative. Right. Plan. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. So I'll think about two to four years then. I don't think we can stretch it beyond that. I just imagine that they would start working within one year with a goal by the end of three years to have transition. That's fine with me. If you want to phrase it in such a way that it's clear that you're not expecting this whole transition to occur in a year. Like maybe just the training happens in a year. Yeah. I just, yeah. I feel like if I say two to four years, like they might not even start till year two. Yeah. I the end it. of year two. Though. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll think about that one. So then we have recommendations um, about Farmland transition, parking lot transition, Smith Volk and the schools, um, a recommendation. We have decided we're not going to do resolutions for either the school committee and Smith Volk's, uh, whatever they're called, committee and uh, the Board of Health. Is that true? Well, it's like, I mean, how did it finish? Well, Let's, we'll have more information about the Board of Health. Okay. So, so, the board of health is so I suppose if the Board of Health said, if, the board, if it turns out that the Board of Health does have jurisdiction over the schools and they're really eager to take this issue on, we might, we might change what we've just said. We might actually, um, uh -huh. I guess we can't do that in legislation though. It would have to be, one of our recommendations would be that the Board of Health take this on. Right. And then we would have to decide if we're simultaneously recommending that the school committees take it on or if we're just going to leave it to the Board of Health. Yeah, but I... We want them engaged and positive. So it's not just the Board of Health, like, yeah, using wonder, their authority, right? You know, I wonder how much the principals know about what's going on at their schools. Especially seeing, you know, that Beyond Pat Society report. Because I know Mike Demon, who talks about, was in charge of maintenance. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay. sure the principal even know. Oh, I, I agree with you totally. So the recommendation should, should say something like educate themselves about how current management practices are being done and start moving in the direction of um, reducing chemicals with the ultimate goal of organic management, something like that is what I would say. So. Um, and the other, the other thing is that what, you know, the, all those chemicals listed in the IPM plans aren't necessarily, we don't know if they're actually being used. They're just listed as they're going to be allowed to be used. And then the stuff we actually got from the pesticide company, the, the contractor, we assume is what was actually used. But we don't have confirmation of any of that. It's like, 
we're, we're dealing with not all the information here. We don't have the invoices. Um, we don't know what the janitors just go to the hardware store to buy. Uh, so all we know is that all those chemicals have been approved for use or listed as potentially so used. All the ones in those IBM plants, that's not necessarily ones that they use. Right. Who knows? We why don't they know. Put them in there. We don't know. They want the option of using it for sure. Whether they're using it or not, we don't know. Hmm. But I think the recommendation should still be, no matter what the Board of Health does, mm -hmm. school, depart school department, you guys own this. <laughs> Okay, so I, I guess I, I, I'm, I don't want to put exact words in your mouth at all, but I would like to see kind of like a one, two, three. One being, you know, be very educated about how they're currently being managed, kind of like the process that we did here internally, recommending that process to the schools, that, you know, each principal and the school committee understand how their school grounds are being managed currently um, and then two being, you know, moving in the direction of reducing chemical use, committing to reducing chemical use, and three being with an ultimate goal of um, organic management is the way that I would like to see a recommendation developed around it. If that makes okay, sense so number people. one was get familiar, number two was make a commitment to reduce, and three was what? Um, with an ultimate goal of uh, organic management at some point in the coming years. I mean, I don't think it has to be super specific. We're not, we're not imposing time because we can't, you know, we don't have to. Yeah. But just to kind of give them a guideline of how this is part of our recommendation. Kind of like the way that we've done our process. Mm -hmm. We want you to do it that way too. Because it's. Okay. Um, so how do you feel, Cynthia, about um, about this approach? Given that you started out saying you're really not comfortable with this time frame, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are you now? Are you more comfortable with the time frame? No, I, I, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> are any of us really comfortable with the time frame? <laughs> I'm still maintaining. You mean that. for our work? Which time frame are we talking about now? Uh, getting the resolution um, oh. to you know city council and everything. But I'm it, fine. But the final report is one, and mm -hmm. the uh, legislation, the, the ordinance right. draft. I, I, I'm fine if we attack this school issue, which I think we are. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how yet we are suggesting the oversight advisory mm -hmm. um, committee, because I think that's key to success. Right. Um, and, and letting the city council know that it's key because this needs to be participative as opposed to top down. You know, we're changing a culture. That's, I mean, but yeah, I'll be fine with the timeline if we can address those. So if we address it and we say we, there needs to be, a, our recommendation is that there be an oversight, a very active oversight committee with mm -hmm. the following responsibilities. Whether it's in the then, mayor, the city council, I don't know. And we don't have to specify yeah. that. Then the city council can say, "Oh well, we can't have that," mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you know, then the whole thing could get dropped. Is that how we talk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the public has to pick up on that. Uh, exactly. The public so then we're relying that. on um, others to continue mm -hmm. to exert pressure mm -hmm. on um, mm -hmm. to create a, 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 an oversight commission mm -hmm. out of the mayor's office or wherever. Yeah. Wow. Now, could there be um, could there be an oversight commission that is mandated by the Board of Health? In my experience, we've never done it, but I don't know if there could be. Well, that might be another option. Yeah. All right. So we have. Could you add that to your list of things to talk about? Five on recommendations so far <clears throat> about farmland management, parking lot management. Um, Can I just say there, mention farmland and parking lot management transition? That's what you said earlier. To what? Organic. To organic. We're recommending that ultimately at some point. Oh, okay. And we're not. We're not. Yeah. yeah thank you. Sorry. Smith, Vogue, and Schools recommendation, but we're kind of holding off on that until we have we have word from Cindy about her conversation about whether the Board of Health has jurisdiction over the schools and, and wants to over, take it on. Right, and then well, but again, I feel like even if the Board of Health says 
they're interested in doing this, I still would love to have a recommendation written down about the schools just so that mm -hmm. we're yeah. encouraging them separately. And then um, oversight committee, and <clears throat> we don't, we, we haven't gotten into the exact details of what the jur what the responsibilities of that oversight committee would be. Well, I did have I do have a draft that I put out. Great, um, and you know we can tweak it or change it or whatever. All right. So the my question though is, do we have any other recommendations that we want to see in this report? And then we have to decide who's actually writing these. And I know. Cindy, you sent us a draft of your recommendations, mm -hmm. and we should probably go over those to see if we want to put them on the official list, right? Yeah, I also did a little bit of addendum before the meeting, which I, I have copies of that. And, uh, so uh, with, with some of these addendums that I put, so I revised my draft a little bit. Um, uh, how about something that says um, we have one department using one vendor, another department using another vendor. We have this sort of non-standardized approach that doesn't have amounts necessary, a tracking system. Okay, there's no tracking, that's for sure. Should we have a recommendation that, that calls that out uh -huh. and says, you know, mm -hmm. and possibly a way to save money for the city is to have one vendor, one price. Mm -hmm. um, but is that actually in our purview in terms of um, reduction? Like, um, I don't think that it's our job true. to manage how mm -hmm. pesticides um, are being. That could be part of the oversight committee's yeah. mission. Yep. It's yep. creating systems of That's oversight true. and management, true. something like that. Yeah, and that makes tracking. Tracking, uh, tracking the city's use and of vendors, training, certification, use, inventory. Do the, um, okay, those chemicals, they, they don't have any shelf life, do they? Probably. Yeah, they, they, so some of them do. I've I just heard this like 20 year shelf life. Oh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. But don't we, are we going to have time in this meeting to go over the sections that were shared with each other so that we can provide? We have, we have 35 minutes, so yes, I think so. Okay. If, we, if, we, if we wrap up this part of the conversation. Except we still have to talk about Cindy's recommendations, too. But I guess but that's, that's one of the, one of the one sections. Of the sections. Oh, well, some of this might be over. Some yeah. of those are that's just a brainstorm. Um, I did, while we were talking, I did find out all the communities in Hampshire that have that paragraph saying, we don't do this. Really? Um, but there are some that do do it. So we can't make the statement that we have to the other one. But just for quick information, these are the communities that say, we do not use any pesticides. Goshen, East Hampton, Amherst, Southampton, Hadley, Granby, Williamsburg, Hatfield, Pelham, and West Hampton. Um, so that would be in our recommendation for Smith Folk and the schools, you're saying? Just yeah, the way we would point them. out. And which ones do? Um, first of all, I just wanted to ask Kate about Plainfield. All of its IPM says they use cedar wood oil. Oh, well, that's, that's non-toxic. Okay, so we could probably include Plainfield in, but they don't have that statement. Um, I'm you sorry. Type those I'm at sorry, the same time. You probably it might be under those EPA. Toxicity range you told me about? Yeah. Because even like citronella oil is like um, but if those are three and four. The, <laughs> really? Yes. No, I, I printed out, well, I didn't bring it with me, but I printed out what they consider to be the 25 B exemptions. Is it category three or four? And I'm pretty sure citronella was in their exemptions. So <laughs> category one toxic. Not oh, considered sure. toxic. It you know, just means that, you know, this is dangerous for your eyes. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's why that's okay. don't, the category. Don't, don't put the cedar oil in your eyes. Exactly. That's why but I would it, give does it, it that make you infertile? I see. So, but they, the, the EPA has this very long list of chemicals that are exempt from all the restrictions, and uh, citronella is on it. I'm, I'm positive cedar oil is on it. Right. But I, I didn't bring it with me. They have four categories of toxicity. Okay, so the lower numbers are the most toxic, but their toxicity toxicity assessment includes 
for different measures. And none of them are really, I mean, I don't want to say they're innocuous, but. But some know. of them are minor, like you're saying eye irritation or something like that. Like don't put it in your eyes. Right, like 2, two 4D has one through three, one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. They're more serious. So they have LD50s that are very low, for example. Mm -hmm. So they do LD50s on a rat. Right. Remember that? So if that's low or below a certain amount, that will be category one. Right. Okay, but. So I rated them all. Yeah. I looked it up at all. Yeah. But 2, 4D is the only one that had okay. a really low so, one. So you're saying that if cedar, that cedar oil is Citronella oil, oil. Citronella. Right. Is listed as a what? Um, let me see what I found. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, let's let's keep a separate list for people who are a, a communities that are only using cedar oil, for example. Let's okay. just say. So, let, let me just the record show. I said Plainfield. I meant to say Chesterfield. For Chesterfield. The cedar okay. oil. Um, the following communities have no schools. <laughs> so makes it easy. Plainfield and Middlefield. <laughs> but these communities are using pesticides. Belchertown. On their schools? Yes. Belchertown is using. Um, South Hadley. So these are big. You know, it's more important for us to list who isn't to show yeah. just yeah. the magnitude of that yeah. group. That's true. And, and where is using it and Huntington is using it. Now that would the fact that it's in their RPM plan doesn't mean they're actually using it. It means that they, they're, they're saying that right. they might use it's it. Right, it's in the yeah. yes. Thank you. Use it if they and choose to. So we have to talk about who is actually writing up each of these recommendations that we're agreeing on here. And we still have to go over Sydney's recommendations and we have to look at all of our sections. Right? Uh, yes. Um, I am I am willing to try to put together this report based on everything that people give me, um, on the condition that other, that the rest of the committee reads every section very carefully and gives me feedback, because uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some things wrong. Well, I all spent a lot of time, so I don't want it all to go to waste with the sections that people already sent us oh, good. over and making comments, because that's Great. what I thought we were going to do today. Okay, well, let's let's start. We but, may not be able to finish. But I, I'm worried that we're not finished with the recommendations piece. Are we? Do we? Are those is, do those five things are all the recommendations that we're making? Or do we want to look at Cindy's list and see if there's overlap, too? I'm sure there's overlap. Um, yeah, I'm sure there is too. Um, do you have copies for all of us, or I oh. can go to the my email? No, I have copies for all of you on my. So you could just read them to us section. and we'll go down the list. Yeah, I mean, I think we can. You, you tell me if we've addressed this. Um, eliminate the use of all pesticides in city-owned and school property in Northampton by designated date through an exploration of alternative methods of control and implementation of a citywide IPM or OPM plan. So I think. Well, that one's going to have to be changed. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of broad. So um, conduct, number two, conduct a citywide education and outreach campaign. Oh, right. We didn't. On the dangers of pesticide. Citywide education. Okay. Uh, review the practices of look. Childs, Smith College, Smith Agricultural Land, and City Leased Farming Land to determine their pesticide practices and encourage elimination of all pesticide use by disease. So we don't have look and childs in our recommendations currently, and the question is if we want to include those. I feel like it's a little bit of overreach on our part, but I'm open to it if other um, people are. Well, we could, we could add that to the um, oversight committee's responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically just having conversations because we have zero authority over those mm -hmm. places. Or it can be part of education and outreach. I, I think since from an authority perspective, we can let this one go. And uh, or we could just uh, say that the <coughs> Oversight Committee would conduct outreach to private mm -hmm. um, property Entities. owners like yeah. Smith, Smith, Childs, Childs and, Look. and Look. Can I point out to you the, that both the Smith campus day school mm -hmm. and the Smith early childhood education, I didn't know there were two entities, have that 
in their IPM reports have that paragraph that says we do not use pesticides. Really? When we know they're being used on the athletic fields. <laughs> but um, just, just thought it's fascinating. fascinating. Oh, okay. Should I move on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, the advisory oversight committee. Mm -hmm. So I think we can we've addressed that. Okay. Uh, number five, there needs to be enforcement strategies and a discussion as to where that enforcement responsibility should be in the city. I'm not sure what we can do with that. That'll be built into the legislation. Okay. I'm saying the, the Department of Health will oversee. Um, C, standardized practices and vendors of pesticide applications citywide. That's part of that tracking thing that I was talking about. That so maybe we just call that tr tracking rather than. Mm -hmm. Talking about vendors, is that right? Is that okay? It's yeah, good okay. with me. That's sort of mm -hmm. the spirit of it. Um, Except I, oh, vendors. I, I don't care about, but inventory. I mean, maybe that's just use tracking the city's use of pesticides. I guess means inventory, right? I would say so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, seven require training and protection from mm -hmm. all oh, protection of the people. Who are applying just to say that. How are you going to do that when they have private? Yeah, I. Uh, um, a, it's yeah. not just though. Remember, Wayne told us that you know he has an employee. He's right. Doing well, the DPW has licensed pesticide applicators on their staff, and as do some of the schools, um, and that's why they can go apply them, right. um, the even the even beyond what their event what their contractor is doing. So the vendors, we don't own them. We just hire them and they right. choose to expose themselves. I don't think we have any purview over that. Right. And we are assuming that all the people who are city employees are adhering to their, they have licensure and they're adhering to things. But just as a model of that, you know, when UMass went um, smoke free, if you think about that campus, 100% smoke free, mm -hmm. and all the people and contractors they hire to build buildings and all that stuff, they have to that's, that's part of the deal. So that's built in when they assume a contract. Mm. So, you know, you can't have construction workers smoking on the site. So, uh, in that philosophy, you know, the vendors need to know, you know, even though we contract you to do stuff, you need to know what our values and principles are here, I think. But that could be down the road. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, I would just point out, I know someone who works at UMass, and <coughs> people who smoke all the time at UMass, there's very little enforcement. Yeah. That, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so never mind. Um, but it does work to some degree. <laughs> so, anyway. uh, I'm sure it helps. Yeah. 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 Uh, eight, uh, draft a citywide IPM and BPM plan, which I would have written with that and say OPM. But that includes storage, certification, training, protection, provisions for exemptions and waivers, as well as standardized use. Um, that could be the oversight thing. You know, I think we need a plan as a city. I don't know if that's a recommendation. You that would plan. be an oversight committee thing. It's a broad plan. I'm not sure what the plan would include, but it includes a lot of things. Yeah. Got, Got more? Um, just number nine, which is reconsidered the pesticide application on the high school athletic field. Maybe in the Smith Volk and the schools um, recommendation, um, Adele, you could add a sentence that just calls that out in particular. <clears throat> Something about um, that the athletic field, the high school athletic field, doesn't need to be perfect or something. Um, that, that, that they really take under consideration um, the question of the, the heavy use of pesticides on the high school. Just, I don't know, to highlight that somehow in the broader recommendation of yeah. the three-point recommendation um, you made. Interestingly, the law, the um, uh, Children and Family Protection Act, um, specifically says um, pesticides are prohibited for use for purely aesthetic reasons. Mm -hmm. So, um, where is that? In FIFRA or somewhere else? No. State, state law? 
that's a state law. And, uh, uh, and then some of the, um, the individual schools that uh, policies that, I've, that I have read, some of them say that specifically. Um, I, I'll, I do have the law printed out somewhere, so I'm sure I... They'll claim that it's not so it looks nice. I, exactly. So it looks They're like, going to claim that it's for know, safety because, right. oh my God, if there's a hole in the field, somebody will fall and break their leg. Nothing you can do about it except drench it in pesticide. You know, the, the policy goals of that policy are great goals for us to adopt. Mm -hmm. And it mirrors the state policy. So when someone says, well, you know, the science and all that kind of stuff, um, they're, they're just really good. You know, they're just if it's a state law, we are bound by it. Prevent unnecessary exposure of children to chemical pesticides. <laughs> you know? Um, promote safer alternatives. Do you know where that is in the um, general law? In case I want to quote um, anything from yeah. it. It is. I, I actually think I quoted it. In, 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 chapter, chapter 85 of the Act of 2000. There you go, Kate. Okay. Chapter, chapter 85 what? Chapter of the Acts of 2000, an act protecting children and families from harmful pesticides. What section is it? Chapter 85 section? Uh, it's all that it says here. Uh, it's okay. not hard to find. Yeah, I, what, all I did is I googled Family and Child Protection Act or Child and Family Protection Act and I found it. I mean, it's very easy to find. Because mm -hmm. that's the I use a sentence that's like in uh, compliance with Mass General Law. Right, uh, right. Is this right up there? Oh, good. Okay. Okay, so we're done with recommendations, right? Um, yeah, did it, I mean, did anyone else submit these? I didn't know. Was I going off a deep end here? No, we, no you were doing, doing what we were oh, all supposed to be oh, doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, right. And, um, <laughs> deep ends. <laughs> so so the ones that I had drafted or have, we have already talked about today and, uh, and are included. All right. So let's look at our sections. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have. And just a procedural question. Everything we've submitted, do I have to attach that to the minutes that it goes up on the website, like the recommendations, mm. these drafts that we're working with right now? Uh, once I, I think okay. um, once, don't need to wait. after we put it together and call it our draft, does that have to go to the city website when we have a draft report? As long as we're talking about it here. In the final report. Yeah, okay. the final oh, okay. report. Is and these all say draft on it. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> so Adele sent us a draft and okay. I made comments on it. Cindy sent us a draft and I made comments on it. <clears throat> and then Kate and I worked on the introduction together and we have it on Google Docs to look at here, but I see that not everyone has a computer, so. And I thought we weren't allowed to use Google Docs. Uh, well, just the two of us. Oh, okay. But I, I, knew it. I, I don't have email with me, but you recommended that I get it to everybody before the That's what we had said. said that you can, it wasn't my recommendation. We had said in the last thing that we would share all of our sections and we would come to this meeting with our comments on the sections that everybody submitted. So I was just asking you to do what we had said. But there is a difference between using Google Docs when people have editing privileges and using the Google Docs for viewing privileges only. And that's the same as sending a Word document. I mean, but it was really just me and Kate, and now we're look, we're using it to look at as a group. Yeah, we're not. Right. Yeah. I'm just suggesting that nobody share a Google Doc with editing privileges to anybody else because that violates open meeting law. Okay. Is that what I did? I don't really know. You said I, I got just printed yours, and so that what I'm handing you is a revised thing that I did. So that's, that's okay. 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 Thanks. Um, the thing that I got said that you, it just, you know how you get this automated message? It said, Kate Simmons has sent you a Google Doc to edit. And I didn't try to edit it. Uh, so I don't know if I actually have editing privileges or I don't have editing, but you, as the owner of the document, can set, when you share it with anybody, you can say whether or not they have editing privileges or viewing on Google Docs. You, you learn, it's, a, it's not hard, you, you get right, it. Right. Um, but I just, you know, be careful in the future just to make sure that there's no editing privileges that are given to the rest of the committee because that would be deliberating outside of pub the public view. But if it's view only, then it's no problem. You know, I don't really know what I did because I'm not that familiar with Google Docs. Oh, but when you click on share, 
then it gives you the options. Yeah, Editing and share. Over, I did send. send. Yeah. Okay. I I, I don't know. I don't but, know that's what I thought you meant to do. You were asking me to do. I don't know if whether I had editing privileges. All I know is I got it, and I and I thought, ah. To I make it easier, it probably be best to copy and paste the document into a Word document that you sent to everybody, so that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so what I just passed out was a revision to my document, and I circled the revisions. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. It was in, it's in red in your email, mm -hmm. but. Um, Oh wait, I saw that right before I left. Smithing things on yours. Go ahead and make them. <laughs> so I added the fact that the city oh, of Northampton. So what I addressed is your draft recommendations, which were not. Oh, wait, wait. We, yeah, well, we go so you didn't send. Have you sent this out before? Yeah. yeah. So so I added the fact that all our schools are using pesticides. And that there's a bill in the house regulating privacy. I can't believe it's going to go anywhere. But okay. my problem with all of these glyphosate ban bills is that you can ban glyphosate, but then they're going to come up with something worse. Mm -hmm. And they're going to use it, mm -hmm. and you know, oh well, we th we feel so good that we banned glyphosate, but we have no idea what the health effects are of this other thing that people are using. So that's why I'm opposed to those bans myself. It just seems like kind of a waste of energy at this mm -hmm. point. I agree. I guess my question, uh, the only question I have, I think it, it's a great document. I am not sure on the second page of why we would include this. Because um, this again gets into how pesticides are handled, and that's not really the scope of our committee. It was meant to show some pieces of what a policy could be, but if we don't want to. Right, and I feel like our recommendations is where yeah. we would do that piece. Because my understanding is you were more just reviewing what other um, municipalities have done, essentially. So I would, I would um, recommend that we not include the last piece of this. The last page. The last, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then what about um, including in this review the fact that um, the following Hampshire County mm -hmm. school districts state that they have that they do not use pesticides period mm -hmm. i feel like that doesn't fit here as much as it goes in our recommendations that to about the that we're recommending with schools that that would be part of the recommendation that you know there are other communities that haven't done our recommendation to the school because we can't address schools and so to have it in our report doesn't make oh, sense. Oh, to oh, me. oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I get it now. Okay. So, not even mention that our Hampton City Schools are all but, using. But um, I, I want that mentioned, but I think it goes in the recommendation. However, because it's not our purview. I mean, if people so, disagree, but there's this big fine. part of the uh, of, of this piece that talks about the the act protecting children and families, yeah. which only pertains to schools and, and daycare centers. So why would we even mention that if we're not talking going to talk about schools? Yeah, I view this as what are the policies to date. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to go federal state. 
Yeah, I don't know. I could go either way on it because I do feel like we now know that it's beyond our purview to even be commenting on the schools. Essentially, we can make that recommendation, and I think anything that refers to the school should be associated with that recommendation because we are stating that we know that that's beyond our purview, but it's our recommendation nonetheless, something like that. But I mean, if you feel like it makes sense to put it here, that's fine. What about um, adding to the last sentence on the first page, all policies have an exemption clause, but vary on the means of acquiring that exemption. Could we just add a sentence that says, um, they all specify that a health emergency must be documented for an exemption to be given? I'd have to check if that were true. OK, um, that's a good idea. Then I think I might have seen that word in one or two. Um, I thought that was, oh yeah. But I don't, I don't recall. But okay. certainly good. I, I, yeah. It, 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 I believe it's true, and if yeah. it is true, then I think we should say that. And, um, and then, the, you know, sometimes it's, mostly it's the Board of Health or the Health Department, one or the other, that has to make the determination about whether there really is a health emergency. I think the word emergency is used, but Emergency be uh, documented and, uh, and uh, I I actually um, would love to see more in the paragraph that starts cities and towns. Mm -hmm. um, towns doesn't need to be capitalized, by the way, but whatever. Uh, I, I would like to see what, have, hear a sentence on each of them, like bullet point them and say what they are, like just encapsulate in one sentence, ban on glyphosate, uh, mandating organic management, because I think that's the, that's the kind of detail that the city council is going to want to know. And I know that we said we'd attach them as addenda, but I think in a report in a concise manner, just bullet point each of these and say, what their policy is. Does that make sense? Can it be done succinctly? Yeah. Thank you. Because it's not enough to know that they're doing something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think it's important for them to have a, a sense of the range of. Isn't it only Marblehead and East Ham that have organic oh, policies plus wealth lead, I think? Um, aren't most of them IPM? Newberry ports a ban on glyphosate. Which which is neither here nor there, really. I mean it's a policy, but it's not a it it, it doesn't really speak to the general topic of pesticides. It's one pesticide that they banned, which to me is like so. Right, what? but but the whole point of this is to say I, I understand different that. yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying that so. We should be highlighting those that have our, have adopted organic policies for their entire town. It's not a matter of, I don't think it's a matter of highlighting or not. I think it's just understanding that different cities have tackled pesticides in some way, shape, or form in these different ways. Okay. Um, it's not very impressive, though, to say um, that means I have to try to um, add time. Do my um, uh, change my parking lot, um, <laughs> my parking thing. Do you want to take a little Never break? Mind. Never mind. Uh, no, I'm, go I'm just going to very quickly um, do this. I'm sorry, so but I have to do this so, uh, and, and hope and hope that it works. Um, I was sort of trying to do that uh, on the second page. Some of the sort of features of the policies um, uh, and as a what they all have but if you're asking to call out certain things I'm just sort of looking like at Newton I mean they have um, you know an IPN policy that does all those things something really significant right. maybe the banning of the glyphosate in the um, Newberry is significant. I mean, I can I can certainly look at them and see what is highlighted. 
I, I guess what I was going to say before my clock went off is that um, all of our schools have an IPM policy, and we're not very happy with that. So the fact that a town has established an IPM policy doesn't mean a whole lot to me, because how, how is that any better than what our schools have done, mm -hmm. required by law? Um, so I think we should be highlighting the ones that have gone further and said, no, we're, we're not just doing IPM, we are, in fact, well, some of the, I, I, I take, take that back slightly, there's some of the ones that I've read in their IPM policy say, these are the things we're going to try first, mm -hmm. and only if they don't work are we going to move on, and that's very different. I mean, maybe we should include in the body, not as an addendum, the table that you developed, and then people can look at it, and it's a snapshot. People love tables. It's easier to kind of take in. And I sort of redo some of the notesy part and put in a highlight. You know, I don't have to do exactly that table, but sort of, it's, it's about the format. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just went through Andover's, little little town of Andover, and their first sentence is, we, we want to tackle this on public and private land. <laughs> yep. And the way we're going to do it on private land is we're going to do it through community outreach and education. So they put it right in there. They talked about private land, which is yeah. pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. We're going to do that in our recommendations. So, um, and then in Newton, I noticed in your table, that mm -hmm. no, it doesn't really say what the origin of that is. And I have actually communicated yeah. with somebody in Newton, and um, they didn't know either. And they said, oh, we'll look into it. Um, they said it was definitely not an ordinance. It was not a city council action. Um, and they said something like, well, health and human services, blah, blah, blah. But that they, they were going to send me more information. Yeah, it, interestingly, uh, the person in Newton who developed it emailed me um, oh. because Bernadette told her to. Oh, cool. So, um, and who is that? Emily somebody? Or, or, no. Emily or, or I, I don't know. I'm checking my emails now. Okay. Um, because I communicated with Emily, and she's put me in contact with this other woman um, whose name I can't remember. Who's, who was the one who said something about, mm, I'll get back to you, um, but um, something about, what about health and human services? Yeah. Wow. wow. It's amazing how untransparent these things are. Well, actually. because they did it back in 2014, and you know, they may have had hundreds of changes in staff by since then, so you know, you have to. But the document itself doesn't say anything on it. Like some of these documents say Board of Health and um, yes it doesn't say it doesn't that. say anything it just says newton policy all right we should keep moving with our so are you asking graphs. me to just kind of um pipe up the gra the red the table well at least um key. yes i would add you know, I would, sir, I would like, love to add, you know, the origin of the Newton policy when, after we find that out, if we find that out. Um, I don't know how to amp up the, the, the table. I mean, it's, I think Marblehead is the only one that actually has an OPM policy, right? Um, I think so. And then uh, Wellfleet was another one that I found, but um, I don't think that any of the rest of these are or have organic policies for the whole town. Okay. So I found this document. I thought I only had the other one, and I do have a bunch of comments <laughs> when I did it really carefully. I think in the second paragraph, um, it talks about regulatory responsibilities at the end. I think that's where we need to have a sentence or two that explains um, what the state has jurisdiction over versus what local municipalities municipalities can and can't do because that's a basic thing that people don't know and um, I don't know that either so what does that uh, a, a local um, I, what I should do is just send you my comments actually we're not allowed to do that um, that local municipalities can't uh, mandate, can't legislate what 
private entities, so home owners, home homeowners, and private businesses can and can't use in the management of their um, their home and their their lawns. That's why we're only um, legislating. We're only able to mandate what we're doing in municipal areas. But does I mean doesn't the city council already know that? This isn't just for the city council. It's a public document oh, for okay. people. And no, the city council probably doesn't know that. That's not oh, something okay. that people know generally. Okay, so that's a but that's a pretty simple sentence. Yeah, it's just a sentence, and then the other things. Cities and towns addressed pesticide use within their municipalities to varying degrees. This is, it's so hard to make these changes if you can't actually just send that track changes. Why can't you send that to, to Cynthia? Direct, I mean, you're not going to share yeah. it with everyone on the committee. You can send it directly to Cynthia. Um, okay, I can do that. Yes, you're right. I thought we were finalizing things today, but if well, we're going to keep working on it and then send if it. You, if everyone agrees to what those things are, you know, like major things, the wordsmithing yeah, if you want to run them by the committee right now, if we agree. Well, we're not going to have time to go through every potential change. So <laughs> our default would be to get back to the original author. If the original author agrees, they would then make the change. Then they would send it to me because I'm putting it all together. Okay. I will send then I'm going to send it out to everybody and I'm going to say, read it really carefully. <laughs> okay. okay. And then at our mon Monday meeting, we will talk about whether anybody has, which problems people have had with the document. How's that? Okey-dokey. But you do want me to work on the grid. That was my suggestion, but I don't think anyone else is waiting on it. What did you want her to add? I just think um, that people are going to want to know what different cities and towns have done, and so that the <coughs> simplest way to do it is to her just to tweak the grid she already created for us and just embed it in here. I see. So rather than just saying that there's a committee, with representation from several departments, you wanted to say, what is this committee responsible for? Like, what, what are they going to do? No, the no, new, no, like no, no, no. Like talking new. about the fourth paragraph. Are we looking at the same document? That what grid happened? are you talking about? The grid of the one that somebody <laughs> produced? Yeah. Are you talking about this grid? Yeah, yeah. I can't see that. Right. Okay. Well, if this is the grid, then, um, then, then what you're saying is that it should have another column perhaps that says maybe enforcement's not really the important column. Maybe in, replace the enforcement column with something like um, key highlights? Yeah, there you go. All right. High points of their policy or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that would be really useful. I think that would be very useful. Yep. I mean it was useful to us to understand what the range of possibilities was and it will be useful to mm -hmm. other people reading this. So when it says something like, for example, ordinance, use of glyphosate only, uh, what it would mean under the policy, it would say, bans the use of glyphosate on city-owned property, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Elisa, you will send me around. And we don't really know if that applies to the school Oh, you're saying it does apply to the school system, and that was why you were saying it was a precedent. But that our city solicitor just yeah I yeah. read the legislation on yeah. that yeah. included schools yes. right right okay so I'll send this so another draft that we got was from you Adele and it mm -hmm. was your um, oversight committee recommendation uh huh yep. Adele, just a reminder, when did you send that? Um, and does it look like this? Yeah. Okay. That's it. So other than a little bit of wordsmithing, um, and I can send this to you, I think we can't uh, include anything that talks about who will appoint who or where the committee's going to originate, because you have members of the committee will be appointed by you know, question mark the mayor. Yeah, so that whole section comes out, the, right. that whole sentence comes out, yeah. And then I think we have to be very careful in our wording just so that we're not overstepping. Um, recommended membership of the committee Okay. Yeah. would include representatives from the following mm -hmm. yep. um, 
So that's just that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is really just wordsmithing that I don't think we need to all work on together. So I can send you my okay. And then I've written a whole bunch of things that we've added to what to this oversight committee's responsibilities in our conversation today. Yeah. Uh -huh. So look at it carefully when I send you the whole thing. Make sure you read it. Okay. See if I got it right. Right. Now you haven't sent this out yet. You're going to send. Uh, no, I ha I've only sent out this draft. But what I'm going to do is put together everything and send the whole thing out, probably Sunday, gotcha. before our Monday meeting. Um, and I want everyone to read it really carefully because on Monday we're going to give it the thumbs up or the thumbs down. So for the section that came and feel free to send me comments also if you you know in the meantime. That Kate and I worked on. Should we just offer a little overview of it, or should? Well, I looked at it and I thought the whole first section looked looked good to me. Except um, I thought maybe we could strengthen the language a little bit, like you know, it, the word may may have human impacts. I thought we could strengthen that a little without saying without saying something that we don't know is true by saying that there are concerns. <coughs> Um, there are widespread concerns about the health impacts of um, pesticides. We don't have to say that they've been proven, but, but it is true that there are concerns. Did you, you read it today? Read it today. I didn't make any comments because I, that would not right. have been you can't do that. appropriate. Um, so maybe we should just read it really quickly. But the second page, I thought, was, was more like recommendations. That, that was the comment that I, did you see my comments on it? I, I didn't see your comments. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly what I said. The whole second page would mm -hmm. be more appropriate as an intro to the recommendations section. Um, and some are actual recommendations. Okay. So it says, infants and children are more sensitive to chemical pesticides than adults. And so they, in particular, need to be protected from exposure to that end, pesticide use in schools, parks, et cetera, mm -hmm. should be limited or eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, the use of pesticides that cause colony collapse disorder should not be used. Pesticide effects on environmental systems must also be considered. Uh, it is also important that the city make efforts to educate its citizens as to proper use of pesticides. So those, are, those all kind of fit into recommendations, I think. Yeah. Does that make sense so, to you, Kate? Yes. As the author? Kind of. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Can I just say one thing about the common collapse disorder? There's some pesticides that kill bees. The neo No, that causes common collapse, collapse disorder, which isn't necessarily killing them outright, but there are some that kill them. So which uh, I put into that recent table. Uh-huh. Common the, collapse disorder the the queen and the honey stays and all the workers leave. So mm -hmm. yeah, clearly they're gonna die probably. So do we wanna add something about that to our recommendations? We don't have that now. Well, I'm just saying that in addition to common collapse disorder, it's also toxicity to bees. So did or you note in the table something that, that, about toxicity to bees? Um, in the, I added that column. You did? Okay. Yes. I, yeah, I haven't looked at your new graph. That, no. you new table yet. Right. And at the same time, I included all the pesticides that were on those IPMs, but mm -hmm. now I'm finding out that they're not necessarily using them. Right. So what we could we could retitle the table instead of use pesticides in use, we could say um, pesticides in Northampton. <laughs> pesticides <clears throat> that may be used in Northampton that are you know listed as. <clears throat> permitted. Yeah, that's permitted. <coughs> permitted. Or permitted for use. <coughs> permitted. <coughs> I think maybe used. Well, then you'd have to have an asterisk to define what maybe means. Okay. You know what I mean? So change it to review of pesticides. <coughs> oh, good. Come back. 
<laughs> well, you probably have, a, have to have an asterisk after permitted anyway to say what does permitted mean. Yeah. And then you would say listed as part of the IPM plans. Where is that thesaurus when we need it? <clears throat> because, uh, you know, the, the word permit in, in, a, in a city has a specific meaning. We don't want anyone to think that. Think that. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, we have to. We have to go. I, ha I have. Uh, I have to get somewhere. <clears throat> well, I'll try to just reword that. Okay. To be more acceptable. <clears throat> that sounds good. So, you will make an executive decision about what happens with this last part, which is the last part. I'm sorry. The second page. The second page. Yeah, I will. Okay. So, uh, I guess I need the committee to authorize me to make executive decisions as I put this thing together. Does anybody have any problem with that? I have no problem with that. No. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And then you will all have an opportunity to comment. So if you don't like an executive decision I've made, you will say so. Okay. Promise. And what's our time frame for the legislation draft? I will have it to you probably on Sunday as well for a Monday meeting. And if I find out something from the Board of Health, can I email everybody as to what I found out? Or just a deal? I don't see why you, unless the Board of Health has a problem with you advertising it. True. Because that would, that could be. Uh, yep. If, if you just communicate with one yep. person on the committee, if, if somebody FOIAs, all, all communications related to our committee work, that would be part of it, right? I don't understand that question. Someone, which Somebody part? Somebody FOIAs us, what? <clears throat> if, Sorry, if, Cynthia, if Cynthia sends me an email that says, confidentially, this is oh, what yeah, the Board yeah, of Health well, Anything that you send it to <coughs> this business as a member of this committee can be FOIA and is considered public. So if you want something to be confidential, you should probably just call somebody. And then it doesn't become a record. <clears throat> well, you're finding out on Friday, so why can't you just let us know on Monday? Yeah, I just because all this Sunday activity, I just didn't know it was different. So. Well, if you if you find out something really big and important, then uh, if it's okay, if the Board of Health is okay with it being well known, then you can email all of us. If they don't want, if they want it to be confidential, that's a whole different subject, <clears throat> whole different circumstance. Okay. And just, um, I don't think I have any new business, but I just wondered about that agenda that I mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Um, because it, if we have a meeting on Monday and today is Wednesday, this is 48 hours, 48 business, business hours. hours. This has to be in by tomorrow, tomorrow, whatever time our meeting is on. Any kind of, <laughs> 10 a.m. on. Yeah, just any kind tomorrow. of an agenda. You could mirror this agenda. Totally. <clears throat> Can you just. Send that right now to Laura. Just say, just change the date on it to November fourth, and send it to her and say, "This is yeah, the agenda my, we've just agreed on for Monday." My problem is I was using that agenda for my minutes. So, I, do you know what I mean? I yeah, don't I don't know what you mean. Um, so, <clears throat> do you want me to send her something? Yeah. If you have, do you have today's agenda? You can just change yeah. the date and send it to her. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Just say that you know. So we can make a ten o'clock deadline by tomorrow. Is it, yeah, we have to have it posted by 10 o'clock tomorrow. Right. right. So if you send it to her now, she'll probably do it first thing in the morning, which is great. Okay. So I'm sending. sending. Makes really good sense. Thank you so much for you thinking your draft. draft. You, your draft, and more of the agenda. And I'll sit here until I get all that done. Oh, yes. thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to move to a general oh. meeting. Second. Right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I second that. So am I doing anything? You're going to change.